Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Welcome to Pod Talk, short conversations with podcast creators that are not just about podcasting because I like to take the scenic route. My guest today is Dave Clausen. Welcome, Dave. How are you this morning? Doing wonderful. Good morning, Craig. Great to see you again. Good. I we had oh, we had <clears throat> a pre-call. <sighs> Sorry everybody. We had a pre-call a couple weeks ago that we really should have recorded. <laughs> <laughs> but I try to avoid doing that to people when I tell them, we're just going to talk. We're not recording. Um, so that was awesome. Thanks for that. Um, and our little conversation before we started here was a little challenging because we have like five different places we could start and head off. And so mm-hmm. the one that we kind of agreed we wanted to start talking about was let's start talking about process. For those of you who aren't process nerds, wait, don't panic. We're going to go somewhere in particular with this. Um, so Dave, you've got. Um, in some ways, you remind me of me. <laughs> because <laughs> that good or bad? I don't know. That's a good, well, that's a compliment. You're process oriented, and you've got multiple, uh, multiple spinning plates or balls in the air. If you like juggling metaphors instead, and I, I, when we were talking, you were mentioning that you're thinking about or in the middle of playing with switching from Asana to Notion. I think you said correct. Um, so people are like, yeah, but what does this guy do? But before we go there, just tell me a little bit about what you're looking at within Notion that kind of excites you, that's making you rejigger your processes. And that I think will lead us into what you do with this stuff. Yes. So the emphasis, the reason, the driving factors behind switching from Asana for my project management to Notion is that my business is growing. I'm taking on more and more spinning plates and thank you. Thank you. And to help balance all of those spinning plates, I'm bringing up a team of subcontractors and wanted to be able to collaborate better, more effectively as we take on these bigger and bigger projects together. And we needed a, a space to do that. And I love Asana. I had portfolios, workflows, rules, automate, like it was awesome, but it was expensive to pay for a whole roster of subcontractors that might only be working with me on like one project for two months. So looking, I I could go the Microsoft Teams route. I could just use Google Docs and Google folders and Google Sheets. I could track all those links, (laughs) right? And a whole bunch of what do they call those? Like a tables thing. And if this, then that, you roll it yourself. Right, right. So I found Notion. And it is a a combination of pretty much all of those different tools with a little bit of AI sprinkled into it. It just makes it fun to play around with. And I'm only about a week and a half into the transition and I'm loving it. It's that one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. I was actually telling my marketing team yesterday, before I even open my email every morning, I opened up notion. That's what guides. That's what drives my day. Mm -hmm. So I'll hit pause there and see what you think. Cause I could just ramble and rant all day about it. Um, I, this podcast is not actually brought to you by notion, but it should be. Um, (laughs) I haven't looked at notion per se, uh, so if people are like, well, that sounds cool. Yeah, go look at that. We have the internet for that. Um, so if it isn't clear, Dave is uh, like a process, like a structured guy. Mm-hmm. And of course, you and I hit it off right away. And what my actual question, that's like a big setup for, okay, mm-hmm. why are you like, for me, if I decide, oh, this thing's interesting, you know, the shiny syndrome. Mm-hmm. that I have to control myself and say, what's my definition of done? And I, and I literally in my head is like, DOD, DOD, definition of done. If I don't know what done is, I do not start the thing. So I know exactly what done looks like for this show. Mm-hmm. It's at the end of this other checklist on this second sheet over here that involves like, say, thank you to Dave. It's like the last checkbox. Mm-hmm. Um, and I won't like start recording unless I know this is what's done for the show. Because otherwise I end up with way more things than I can possibly do. So it's a lot of work, it sounds like, to switch from Asana to Notion. And it's a lot of work to build a team. And like, why are you, uh, why? Why are you podcasting? Why are you doing all this? Oh, my. So this was supposed to be a quick conversation, right? Yeah, in two minutes or less. No, it's fine. You can talk as long as you want. All right. So in two minutes or less, the big picture why is lifestyle design. Um rather than get a day job and build my quote life around 
the job. So evenings and weekends, I set out to build a job that will be the vehicle, the means to let me live the kind of life that I want to live. And so part of that, then when you start your own business means systems, it means a lot of work, but the only way to really maintain my sanity and effectiveness to be able to then live that kind of life that I want to live takes systems. It takes processes. So that's kind of the the very big picture why. And in the scope of my business, podcasting is a, a very strategic method, tool, aspect of my business in that I work in the substance misuse prevention field. So I train people at state, at the state level, at the local community level, regional level, to then go out and do prevention work to make their communities safer, healthier, and drug-free. So it's kind of a, a capacity builder. What I found was, though, somebody in Pennsylvania might be curious, well, what's, what's working over there in Ohio or Indiana? I want to mm. learn from them. Other than professional conferences, there wasn't really a means for folks to hear. Enter podcasting. Enter podcasting. It's a great way for folks to hear what's going on around the country, what's working, what's not working, to help educate, to help inspire, and hopefully, too, to foster some new connections. At the end of my, my conversations, I ask folks, how can they get connected? How can folks reach out to build that, that bigger culture of community? to where we can ask each other for help and support. Uh, I feel like I'm kind of rambling a little bit, so hit pause there too, but that's that's the why behind. Yeah, you're not rambling. You're not rambling. I I think that, uh, I'm just going to put some more dots on the painting here. We were talking before I hit record, and I was sort of outing myself as like, "Eh, I really should do more with promoting my shows and, people, if I'm a guest on someone else's show and then they invariably ask like, what are you going to do to help promote the show? I'm like, "Eh, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Like, I mean, I have dedicated people who like, you know, yes, I mean, them I do anything, but I don't have a thousand listeners. Um, So I often think, oh, I should be doing more with PR and it's, I I don't really like social media, but there's nothing wrong with like, I can be one of the people who's making good content. Like I have no problem with like putting good into the world through the platforms that everybody's using. That's fine. Um, I don't expect anything from it. Um, and, and I think you said something um, that made me go, oh, whew, thank you, which was, you basically said, oh, Craig, your why is different. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just making, really, I'm just making these shows because I'm so expletive deleted passionate about uh, conversation. And mm-hmm. I find mm-hmm. that every time I get into one of these conversations, I come away with some new idea or, or some new thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did do that correctly. So I just think uh, it sounds like you're pretty, um, I want to say mature, but that's not quite the right word. You're pretty on it about being mindful about the why. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm guessing, so if your why for making a podcast is to share that, hey, you know, you can, you can, uh, Dave can be heard, you know, across the world. Mm-hmm. If your why is to share that, it sounds like that takes some of the pressure off or a lot of the pressure off about like, well, I I guess I don't have to worry about monetizing this thing. I don't have to find sponsors who are they going to tell me what to do. I don't have to be like, I must find really popular guests. Otherwise my show doesn't grow. Um, So if I'm, you're not, he's not a long audio only show. If, if you, that's a clarity for you. Um, It sounds like you had that clarity before you pressed record the first time. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering, like, uh, am I reading that clarity correctly and your journey to reach that clarity? And then maybe since you're really good at answering questions, maybe what can people begin to think about if they're kind of at the fork in their roads? Oh, should I be working on better guests? Should I be working on better podcast creation myself? Should I be working on a team? Like, how, to, how does somebody find their why or focus or clarify their why? Yes. Easy. So- easy question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Easy question, like a softball question, although I'm not a softball player. Um, why, like finding your why, I would say there's different layers to it. If you've read the book by Simon Sinek, Start With Why, love it. And actually my computer wallpaper is my why statement, having gone through a workshop with his team 
to really clarify my big picture why, which is to live and share a life of continued growth so that we may overcome adversity and live a fulfilling life. That is a, the capture all behind everything that I do, living and sharing, so we can overcome adversity. And when I tackle a project or a new event, a new partnership, whatever it may be, being able to articulate your why behind it, to clearly articulate it, helps do a lot of things. One, it helps ward off the shiny object or squirrel <laughs> syndrome. Right. <laughs> right. It, it, it really does. It's that definition of done and it can help you stay on track, but also it can be your, your guiding compass. You know, is the, if this is the why, does it really serve my bigger why, my bigger vision? Does it help me get to where I want to go mm. or help me be who I want to be? And so when it comes to specifically podcasting, what I see is I've coached folks to, to start their own podcast is really being able to articulate that. Because as I've experienced, and I know you kind of articulated too, that when you get into it, you go on a guest, you're a guest on a show and you're thinking, oh, I could do that too. Or, oh, hey, I should get a new <laughs> microphone. Or, oh, I think I'm going to put some new acoustic treatment on my ceiling because somebody else had it and I saw a picture of it on Instagram. Yeah. But does it serve my why? Or is it sort of that squirrel moment or shiny object? So really articulating your why then once you know why you're doing things, you can then start to unpack what, what is that definition of done? Hmm. You know your why, then you know what you actually want to accomplish, that definition of done. Then that's going to bring you to the how. So how can you best accomplish that? Is it building a team? Is it new tech? Is it new systems? Is it switching to notion? But it starts with the why and then that what or the definition of done then you can figure out the actual how to get there. If you skip those other steps and you go right to the how, you're just going to be trying new toys, gadgets, wismo, gizmos, and all that. What do you call it? Uh, super insightful. <laughs> People listening, see why I just lobbed that mess at him. Um, yeah, we had we had some great conversations before we last record. I um, recently, uh, I kind of you know. Um, I don't know if you're a Harry Potter fan. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, but there was this My wonderful is, thing. So there's a by default. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a thing. I think called a pensive when Dumbledore used to literally with his wand pull the ideas out of his head and drop mm -hmm. them into this large stone basin called a pensive, and then he would yeah. like swirl these ideas around. And I, I'm like, oh, that's a beautiful image that she wrote, you know, for the book. Mm -hmm. So I often imagine that I have a pensive, and I pull these ideas mm -hmm. out and I stick them often in a document. I stick them in a document, but it's way more cool to have the Harry Potter movie image. And then I love your way of saying like. Like, as I pull these things out, I'm like, is this really about like this thing? I'm holding a thing up. Is this about why? Or is this about what? Or is this about how? Or is mm -hmm. this, I need a nap? Like, yep. I think I don't spend enough time because I say that because when I do spend time, it works out great. I don't spend enough time characterizing my thoughts and like letting things like settle, let the snow globe mm -hmm. settle a little bit and then start to decide. Uh, I've been thinking about uh, a piece. I'm pretty sure it was written by Cal Newport. He was talking about where is your scene, like in the 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 arch archetypical archetypal one is the 1900s writing literary scene in Paris. Mm -hmm. If you were a writer, yeah, you'd sit in the cafe and drink some wine, and two authors behind you would be talking about story, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and you just couldn't help but find yourself energized as a writer because you were in among all these writers. So I've been mm -hmm. thinking about scene for podcasters. So I'm notorious for rambling. Here's an actual question. Uh, where do you go, if anywhere? How do you maintain your energy levels around podcasting? Is it purpose-built space? Is it you've got a mastermind group? Is it communities you hang out in? Is it you're just infinitely, <laughs> infinitely energized? My energy comes from quiet, comes from just sitting with my own thoughts and reflecting on them and spending some time with them, digging in, kind of being able to articulate the why, the what and the how behind them. And then I get sort of booster shots of energy when I get to interact with great folks and have amazing conversations. I love 
conversation. And that, that helps me connect. That also helps reinforce my why, the purpose behind what I do. And it helps sort of fuel my internal battery seeing the positive impacts I have on individuals' lives and then the one the impacts they have on the lives that they go out and interact with as well too. Like that all just brings me energy. Hmm. There's this problem with profound things. There's nothing you can say after something profound. <laughs> what? Uh, what else is top of mind for you at the moment? Where do you, where do you want to go next? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, so batteries. Let's talk about batteries in that you know, I brought up my my inner battery and spinning plates and the the why behind I why I do what I do and to bring it back to processes. We we can sometimes look at processes as cool automations, cool systems. Mm. We can look at them as, well, it'll make me be more effective. It'll make me, give me more free time back in my calendar. All those things are great, right? But what if you shifted your paradigm, your perspective, and look at systems as energy savers, brain space savers? You've got that, that, uh, I call it a bird bath, but the Dumbledore pool where you're putting all the these pensive, ideas in. Yeah. <laughs> bird bath. Yeah, That's what it looks like. Way cooler. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I'm not a cool dude. I'm just Dave. <laughs> but you have all these ideas, these thoughts, these spinning plates in your mind. And if you can hone in on systems, it takes all those random scattered ideas those, and puts them into a neatly organized process mm-hmm. where you only have to press go. Yeah. And it takes that decision fatigue, that whole stressor. So a lot of my processes, yeah, it's about being better and better and more efficient, more effective. But I'll tell you what, it has an even bigger return on investment for my mental health. It really does. It's the only way I'm able to survive doing all the different things that I, I want to do and that I do. Hmm. In mental health decision fatigue is a re- that's real i'm hoping everybody listening goes yep because if you don't know about decision fatigue i, I don't mm-hmm. know what, well i want to be you um mm-hmm. and i i've learned uh, through trial by multiple fires about not like i went through the fire but we have many many fires and i'm like oh that's a problem mm-hmm. uh, trial by multiple fires of learning to like okay don't overestimate what you can do in a day craig it's way less than you think mm-hmm. um I try to be mindful of like, well, you know, does this need to get done today? And like, I, I know that I want to do it, mm-hmm. um, but does it really need to be done today? Like, and sometimes I can identify clear things like, you know, if I do this today, then all this coming week I get to, you know, I, I fixed my table on a patio, for example. Um, so, okay, I'm going to do that today instead of doing these other things. And I, I really find when I imagine when I'm standing at the Vista, that is the definition of done well, am I doing it or do I, am I thinking about doing it just because it was cool to do or am I, mm-hmm. should I, I should only choose to do things where when I get to the Vista, I can look ahead and say, now this is cool. Now, mm-hmm. because I went to the trouble of figuring out how to use my image editor, I can make cool episode images, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I think my, to my guess, I try not to put thoughts into other people. You know, like everybody thinks I hate to do that to people, but I think too many people are, put off by discussion of process and structure because they think it's going to be constricting. Mm -hmm. And I really agree with your perspective when done right process and structure is actually freeing because it gives you energy. Um, You know, I look at things and I go, Hmm, this doesn't seem to fit my process. That's a hint for me. I probably should say no to this thing because Mm -hmm. the process works nicely. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. You said the power of no. There's like a there's a whole thing around the power of no. Cause if you say yes, you've said no to an unknown number of things in the future. But if you say no to this one thing, you've left an infinite number of yeses open. Absolutely. Whoever said that. Oh, I don't know, but I yeah, I've heard that too. Opportunity cost. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I'm reminded of actually can't see it on camera, but behind my computer is a little board that says discipline equals freedom and that's from the author Dude, jocko I get, a, 
I get a post-it note on my computer that says, there are no miracles. There is only discipline. It's the only post-it note stuck on the frame of my computer. <laughs> I appreciate um, that. NMD, no miracles, discipline. <laughs> right. And we hear discipline and oftentimes folks tense up and like, oh crap, that means you know, I can't do this or I can't mm -mm. do that. And like, no, Discipline it, also means knowing when to get away from my computer and to go watch a movie or when to go for a yes. walk. That's having mm -hmm. enough discipline for to for craig to say to himself okay you need to stop that now you need to go do something else uh, i'm with you all the way oh and you just brought up another thought there too i think an untapped opportunity an area for growth for people is this might sound pretty meta for for you listeners out there but it's the ability to have a conversation with yourself i was just talking about that I was like get out of my head we i had another guest um we, we just came up on another podcast and I'm, what I'm stumbling for is I think it was for a different show. So people are like, wait, what? Um, <laughs> but I had a guest was talking about walking around, having conversations with themselves. And uh, I can do that in a bad way. I can get lost in the whole like arguing or like, mm -hmm. oh, that person did this or that. Uh, but you're right. There is, there, there is a way to kind of pull one's thoughts out of the pensive or bird bath, choose your metaphor mm -hmm. <laughs> and look at them and talk about them to yourself. Yep. Yep. And, for for listeners, if if this is something that intrigues you, I would encourage you to start with the process. And the first first process I did was a seven day, um, oh, what did I call it? A mental diet to where whenever mm. I had negative thoughts, they're going to happen, right? But I wouldn't dwell on them. I would dismiss them right away. Okay, good. Not going to let it derail me, but then sort of the next evolution of being able to have conversations with myself, I now have an increased awareness of my internal head game, my self-talk. Then when I recognize, okay, I'm having, I need to have a better conversation with myself, I can hit pause and then I can follow a process and it starts with just the data, just, okay, what do I know about the situation, the facts, observable right. facts, things you can't argue with. That's just real here. Yeah. Yeah. Just the facts. And then, okay, well, let's go to the, the emotive side then based upon those facts, what am I feeling? And explore that a little bit. And you can use the five whys to really dig to the root of that. Cause like, Oh, I'm just pissed or oh, I'm angry or I'm embarrassed. Ask yourself why five I'm, times. I'm chuckling. Often I get down to like, I need a nap. Like, yep. That's really right. like, I'm exhausted. I need a nap. Get mm -hmm. up from my computer. Right, yeah. right. And then once you work through the emotions, come up with some opportunities. Okay. Now, what are some ideas that come to mind as it relates to the data and my, my emotions around that data? Awesome. Great. Now you just came up with a whole bunch of different ideas. Maybe it is. I need a nap. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, I need a screen break, whatever that this, those opportunities might be. Then you can use some critical thinking to decide which of those ideas is going to be the best outcome. Which one do I want to decide on? So then you decide and ask. So it starts with get the data. Think about what, what is your emotional reaction, your gut response to that data? What ideas come to mind? Of those ideas, which one is most likely, most feasible, most beneficial, and then pick it and go. Hmm. There's your process. Have a conversation with yourself. So, well said, Dave. <laughs> Fun oh. fact that comes out of uh, personality theory and brain science. That is the natural process every single, yes, listeners, every single human being takes hmm. when they process information. And so, when you're able to clearly articulate the steps of that thinking process, you can then slow it down to make better informed decisions. Example being you're driving down the road and the light in front of you turns yellow. You're taken in the data. You notice the light. You look at the intersection. You notice all the cars around you. You have that emotional reaction to, oh crap. Yeah. Right? I should decide. I should go or not. I, right. So then you come up with your options. Well, I could slam on the brakes. I could speed up. You, know, you figure out what options are available. You use that kind of critical thinking to then, well, if I slam on the brakes, I could get rear-ended. Or if I speed up, 
there might be a cop sitting right over there. I'll get pulled over or I could get in an accident. You're, you're using that critical thinking to funnel down and sort through those options. And then based upon that critical thinking, you decide to gun it, slow down. I don't know, but it's that same thought process. Same thing, getting dressed in the morning. It's that same process. <laughs> do the, do the, I was the Einstein thing to have the same clothes all lined up. Right. Uh, right. Decision yeah. fatigue. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the challenge is at six in the morning. I don't have decision fatigue yet, and I it's a <clears throat> how how um, there's like a rate, you know, like if I make the morning super packed, then I'm burnt. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm out of energy too early in the day. Oh, we probably could talk for another hour about restorative practices and all these things. Yeah. Um, we haven't talked really about podcasting networks. I say, have we and, talked about podcasts? <laughs> no, we, we actually we we kind of used podcasting as our example for our conversation. <laughs> around yeah. process but right right well as much as i hate to say it i'll try to keep these things under control otherwise i'm here for yeah. hours 20 25 minutes is a goal correct yeah does that it have a timer back to your your, why doesn't it is it have a timer on your side can you see the time that's elapsed yes 2607 oh, 2607 yep there's a couple seconds get cut off the front but other than that yep. um <laughs> yeah uh, for people listening who are conversation nerds, I sometimes talk about this thing called cicades, <clears throat> not cicade is the insect. There's a thing called a cicade, which is from your eyes, the way your eyes hop on a page when you're reading, they call those cicades. And I got this developing theory. Somebody just tell me where it is. It's already a thing. I'm sure that there's cicades to conversation. And I think a cicade in a conversation is about 25 minutes to a half hour mm-hmm. long, at which point you're going to be talking about something different. So I try to break the show when we've covered one big cicade. That's what's mm-hmm. going on. Anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> every once in a while, Craig like tips open my head and let people peek in and they go, Oh my goodness. I don't want to look in there. <laughs> All right. So Dave, it was a pleasure. Um, had a great pre-call, had a wonderful chat before we hit record. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have lots of other things we need to talk about, more shows, more things to record. Um, I'm sure we will meet again. So thanks so much for taking the time. Distinct pleasure. Always a joy having a great conversation with an awesome person. Thank you very much.